Hey everybody, welcome back, it's just I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Tiffany. Let's talk about an Avengers Centennial. It's Avengers 200. It's the, obviously, 200th edition of the Avengers comic book series from 1980. It is written by David Michelinie with credit to four different people for the story, including oh. David Michelinie, then Editor-in-Chief Jim Shooter, artist George Perez, and Bob Layton. Hmm. Uh, it is also drawn by George Perez and Doctor Strange into Shambhala's Dan Green. Oh, cool. There's no Shambhaliness in here. Mm. Ah, boo! <laughs> it's just kind of standard and straightforward. But it is Perez in 1980, and it's Dan Green who would eventually do Doctor Strange into Shambhali, which you covered here on the show, uh, which I don't know when where that came out. Probably early 80s. I'd say like 82, 83. Did we cover that? No, we didn't. No, we didn't. I was going to say, we never what? did it. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming one day. <laughs> I'm like, what? Are you from Sal the future? Sal has thought about it quite a lot. This though. is true. Yeah. Sal slid. He's from a, oh, a, a yeah. different time. A reality where we did, where, do, where we we did, did that, that and he realized that that's what happened. He was like, oh, yeah, no, no. We, oh, we, yeah, no, we, we no, never no. did it. We didn't do that. All right, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sure. I displaced my previous self. You were, you're a doppelganger. I'm a doppelganger. You're the Black from... Lodge. <laughs> <laughs> This... Wait, you just gonna ignore like Beast's bedroom eyes on the front? Mm. Everyone's uh. like striking a superhero <laughs> pose and he's like, hey, Hello uh, there. I don't understand the treatment of Beast or when Beast ever recovers his dignity, but like I've read the original Lee Kirby X-Men comics and Beast is like, he's funny, but he's also clearly like intelligent and a scientist, but uh -huh. he was a kind of a goofball, but when he got the Avengers, he was like, oh good, the professor's not watching? Well, I am a fucking joke. <laughs> and he just constantly quips and jokes and just bobs and weaves across the, the, the page. That's his coping mechanism. That's how he deals with being a hideous beast. A blue beast. hideous monster, yeah. Because yeah. he wasn't originally a blue beast. Mm. He was just a dude with big feet. Right. And then he tried to rid himself of his mutantdom and fate was like, oh no. <laughs> oh, you weren't happy with being a tall hobbit? Right? Well, guess what? Blue cat man. Blue Eventually, Smurf furry guy. Yeah, that's right, fur. And that's actually that's that's kind of like I want to believe, and I I don't think there ever has been a story in which like God or fate or time is established as a character who is like when you go against the grain, I fuck you. Like when Spider Man tried to rid himself of his powers, he takes it, he gets oh yeah the yeah, six yeah. arms, yeah. and it's like that's the same thing as yeah. Beast. Where it's don't like, try to don't change your status quo. <laughs> Or I will step in and make it a thousand times worse. <laughs> you like that? I mean, ar arguably though, Beast is way better as a blue monster mm. than he I, ever was as a big-footed dude. He should embrace it. He should be headlining furry conventions. <laughs> well, well, that wasn't a thing. <laughs> that wasn't a thing, or at least it. it, it but now he should be doing that. Well, Absolutely. I'm just. It might have been a thing, but it would have been That's more true. covert. He That's would be true. getting like, hey, like invitations to things he doesn't understand. Goes yeah. there, people are like. Ah! <laughs> They're just excited. Yeah. He's like, okay. Well, I'm going to continue to do this, but I'm not going to tell. I should admit. <laughs> Beast was kind of like a mascot or ambassador for mutant kind because, of course, he's a doctor, high mm. profile, was on the X-Men, moved to the Avengers. The X-Men are more covert. They're still superheroes and they're flashy and they're on the news, but like right. the Avengers are like sanctioned and right, they're like public. official, official yeah. exactly. So it's a little less like scary. I, I almost hesitate to say it's like tokenism, where it's like, and we've got a mutant, and see? we've got a mutant, but they yeah. also have Wanda and she's on the Avengers as mm. well, uh, but she doesn't really advertise it. She's kind of like, and I'm here and look at my sexy outfit and <laughs> I have magic. Aren't you a mutant too? Ah, da, 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 da. I'm a, I got a lot of things going on, but but Beast, Beast is a mutant too. See, that's all he's got going on. That's right. true, I am a mutant, thank you. So maybe, so, maybe so, he's a clown because he's laughing on the outside because he's crying on the inside. That must be it. Yeah, that's, that's probably, probably what it is. It. And that's why he's striking that, such a weird come hither pose. Literally the everyone is like, come, like you know, ta-da, here I am. I'm I, flying around, I'm throwing my hammer. And I hate this cover. It's horrible. To the nth degree. There's it's, everything it's about it is wrong. There's just too much happening. There's too much going on. The 200 is clearly like etched from stone. Right. But it looks fragile, which yeah, is actually like kind it's of about funny. To break. Like, we've reached 200. We can't possibly support <laughs> the edifice this is cracking. Anymore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everyone is floating in space and yep. doing something. The it's beast thing betrays he's on the, against the ground. Like, did, did you draw all these characters separately and then just insert and them just in post? Push them together. And then you will also, you of course, have this timeless 
Toys R Us shopping spree <laughs> advertisement at the top that just destroys the cover. There's so many Marvel comics. This is your 200th issue, man. What are you doing? Right? Put it on the back or something. But they, there are so many Marvel comics that are polluted with these Toys R Us shopping sprees. And I'm like, ugh. Like, when you reprint it, just get rid of it. Just just bring the right. art up. I know the art covered the whole thing. You just stuck that thing over the top yeah, of it, right? Please. Like, no. Don't ever forget that the, in 1980, the grand prize minimum value was $3,000 and there are details inside. Oh, minimum value. That's right. You're going right. to get Even at if least you suck at it. You'll get at least three grand worth of shit from Toys R Us in 1980. So in Avengers 200, they're like, we are going to celebrate the Avengers. There's some high-flying superheroics, but it feels like kind of an afterthought. Now, mm. neither of you guys know what happens in Avengers 200, and I'm very excited to share it with you. <laughs> So here is we it go. infamous? I would say it is. Oh. There is a high degree of infamy, and I think that's why there's four different credited story right. producers. They put a lot into this. Well, uh, I think it's more like they they, they laid a lot of blame. Michelini mm, wrote it, around, yeah. but all these other people worked on it, so it's not just Dave's fault. Right. Can't pin it just on Dave. Yeah, but you did. So write all it of them Dave. can say it was the other people that yeah. after that. And Michelini actually did have a different direction for this, and he set it up differently. And then they were like, "No, do it like this." Okay. Like, okay, I work for you. I'm not gonna not. So we mentioned this time. The roster includes Captain America, Wonder Man, Wasp, Jocasta. Who's Jocasta? She's like Ultron's babe. Yes. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Jocasta was built by Ultron. She oh, that sounds familiar. Downloaded Janet Van Dyne's brain into her body. Then they got it back out, but some part of Janet imprinted onto Jocasta <laughs> uh -huh. or copied. Right, and so Jocasta eventually got her own personality, but it is from the copied brainwaves of Wasp. Right, uh, and then eventually, what do you do when you find yourself with a sentient android person? You make them join the Avengers. Right. It was it works so well with Vision, why not right. do it again? Right. Uh, at this point, Yocasta, I think, wants to bang Vision, but Vision's with Scarlet Witch at the time. Mm. She's like, come oh, on. Boy. Yeah. She's like, I, how does it even work? I'm a robot. And it's like, <laughs> we're not even compatible. We're from two different generations. <laughs> I got a micro USB. You got a USB C. Get it's out. It's never going to work. So You're as different from me as I am from, from Wanda. Yeah. Is it everyone on the cover? It's everybody on the cover. Okay. What's funny is Michelini's like, there are too many Avengers. There's there a, are. That's a lot. That's, that's a lot. Let me get rid of one of them. One? Just one. Is it Jocasta? No. Is it Wonder Man? No. Damn. It's Ms. Marvel. We gotta get rid of Ms. Marvel. Mm. She's taking up too much space. Let's get rid of the one out of like three women. The robot doesn't count. Oh. Because anybody could be a robot. The Avengers getting too crowded. And that's the problem with the Avengers. They always get a little, a little too crowded. Right, they keep adding people to them. But... Yeah, until eventually, like you do, you know the, you know a big Avengers like celebratory poster, and just literally everybody in the Marvel universe. You're like, what's Mister Fantastic doing here? So, uh, previously in Avengers, not to borrow from the X Men animated series intro, <laughs> but uh, uh, Carol Danvers had shared that she is Ms. Marvel with the team. Okay. Uh, they couldn't figure it out? No. Well, they didn't even, they don't even know that Donald Blake is Thor. Donald Blake's just a doctor that is helpful that they work with sometimes oh and conveniently God. leaves when Thor shows up. He's a, he doesn't like him. No. They don't get along. No. They were oh, like, Christ, Thor's coming? I'm out. <laughs> Krakoom, leave. I'd so, rather die. Yeah. <laughs> Then deal with him. Then deal with Thor. I'll just go into his broom closet. Just he wait. knows what he did. <laughs> don't ask him, though. <laughs> Do um, they know who Iron Man is? At this point, I don't think so. Mm. So all, most of the secret identities are Are all secret. in the bag, except for wow. Carol. Chris Claremont had written the Ms. Marvel series, or at least had been working on the series, up mm -hmm. until its cancellation, after which they shoved her on the Avengers. Mm. It's funny how many people are, like, nowadays synonymous with the Avengers, but at this point are kind of like, Eh, I guess we'll make an Avenger, whatever. Right. Your book got canceled. Go on the Avengers. That's how I always viewed the Avengers. I'm like, ah, the Unsellables. <laughs> Carol Danvers has become pregnant, has no idea why she's pregnant, and is like nine months pregnant at the start of this, but she was only a few months pregnant a day prior. So it's accelerated, and they're going to have to deliver the baby here in Avengers Mansion. Thankfully, they know a doctor. Right. Dr. Donald Blake helps with the delivery. Oh. So Carol Danvers what is... What about Hank McCoy? I was going to say, oh, Dr. Hank McCoy. Not that kind of doctor. Oh. So, Sir, there's too much fur in the operating room. Get <laughs> Sir, there's no way to keep it sanitary. You're <laughs> shedding on the patient, doctor. 
I don't think he's that. He's not a medical no, doctor. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so Carol is in like what is a makeshift delivery room while all the men are asked, except for Dr. Donald Lake, uh, to stay out. Why did someone just fly her to a hospital? It's just, it's just too advanced. Plus we had this doctor right here. Uh, and we have Jocasta. There's and no time. She could be like a midwife. Uh -huh. Because we, we, we really, could just program her to do that. We haven't really established what Jocasta is here for anyway. So right. like, let's so just have her this. help out. Pitch it for yeah. Dr. Donald Blake. Because so, she looks like a woman, so I guess she can help with the baby. <laughs> Yes, because <laughs> no woman in this issue escapes with any dignity or self-respect. <laughs> Which is like, you know, kind of par for the course in some of these comics. Great. For every launch of a title like Ms. Marvel, there is uh, the cancellation of a title like Ms. Marvel. <laughs> right. Because I like Ms. Marvel. I think it's a cool name and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that Kamala's taking it up. But, you know, Carol was Ms. Marvel. You read the Brian Reed Ms. Marvel series. I did. And, uh, and kind of try to give Carol some, like, agency, as they have constantly tried to do ever since she was created. Mm. Like, I don't know. How about this? <laughs> That's literally what they're doing with her. And at this point, they're like, okay, Avengers 200, how about we celebratorily get Carol off the team? Her book's canceled. Stick her on the Avengers. Get the hell out of here. And that's the end of Carol. And it's like, oh. Cool. So Carol is delivering a baby. And all the male Avengers are like, Oh boy, like get break out the cigars because you know, boil some water, get some rags. <laughs> yes, and that's and stuff. right, that's right. Yeah, Wanda shows up, she's finally you know arriving, and she's like, How did I miss it? Me and Vision, and I'm conspicuously with Vision, like clearly they were banging in the broom closet somewhere, <laughs> but she's like, Did I miss it? I want to see, and they're like, Uh, no, you didn't miss it. Like, it's it's happening right yeah, now. Don't, don't worry, you got you got a minute, you got a minute. Yeah. She's like, Oh, it's just so exciting, and they're like, Yeah, I yeah. guess. Yeah, waiting here is exciting. Yeah. Why does Yellow Jacket's, like, shoulder things, what, what is happening with those? Well, they're big. Why? Because <laughs> they look cool. No, they don't. I think they're supposed to simulate wings. How about this? Not mm. from the side. No, they look like giant <laughs> discs. <laughs> yeah. Like, maybe from the front, mm -hmm. kind of cool. Yeah, but from the side, he just looks like he is deliberately obscuring peripheral vision for no reason. Yeah, he right. looks like it's hard to get through doorways. <laughs> well, that, that's no problem for him because he can shrink and right. melt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you gotta shrink a little more, though, to get into some places. Uh -huh. It's probably annoying things. to shrink every time you go through a doorway. Especially though. since it's not like a natural ability. You need particles that are manufactured right. in order to do it. I bet you could scare the hell out of him just by, like, whispering into them. It'd be <laughs> way louder. <laughs> yeah, the sound amplifier. Hey! Ah! <laughs> so, uh, Blake observes to Jocasta that, like, the delivery is going very easily. Mm -hmm. Like, almost conspicuously easily. Like... And, and, and it doesn't seem that the patient is going through any pain. And she's like, nope. No pain. It's weird, though. It's weird, though? Well, it's we I have a baby. I don't right. know where it came from. I'm delivering one right now. I had it way too soon. Had it way too fully soon. Sized. Fully formed. And, like, I, and, I'm, and I'm going through this delivery pro Like, I'm in the stirrups. Like, I'm still going through this process. And I don't feel any physical... Discomfort. Right, they didn't give her anything. They didn't have to give her anything. Right. And Blake's like, and I don't have to work very hard. Which is good for me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, you know, he's like, okay, well, I guess the baby's ready to go. Like, push. And she's like, I don't have to push. Like, it's just coming out. <laughs> okay. And he's like, well, that's really weird. <laughs> and try like... these fruit pies instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Marva liked to do a lot of, like, brand coordination. I like to think this is literally happening while she's delivering this baby. <laughs> yeah. Well, remember, this is just the human torch. Meanwhile, in the past. Oh my god, I remember those pies. These are Hostess fruit pies. Yeah. They're delicious. Uh, you come in a variety of flavors. Yep. You can get uh, peach, cherry, or apple. I prefer cherry. Oh, uh, I always like the apple. Mm, that's great. We could trade. Yeah. So the baby is delivered and uh, they, you know, everyone's like squeezed up against the window like, yay! Woo! Yeah. Like, Yay. Like, one of their totally own normal. has had a baby. Yeah. This is really exciting. We're a family. And, and they like, put it in a bubble thing. They stick it in a bubble thing. I love how like there's the Avengers mansion is a is a mansion, but it's the Avengers mansion. So all the walls are made of just complicated, crazy looking <laughs> technology. <laughs> and it's and just that, like wires and crap like, all over the what wall. What was this baby chamber 
because they weren't prepared to deliver right. the baby. What was it before? What it was, was a baby this chamber? incubation chamber? Who was this for? It was probably for like alien specimens and crap. <laughs> yeah, well, stick a baby in there. Chickens? We don't even know if it's not an alien at all. Chickens. Yeah, maybe yeah. they're hatching chickens. <laughs> Free range adventure <laughs> chickens. Yeah, it's like a side hustle that Hawkeye's going. <laughs> Ha. And why did they put the baby in a bubble? Why don't they give the baby to its mom? Because Carol doesn't want to have anything to do with it. She's like, oh. what is this? She's like, this? that's not my baby. It's really weird. This right. is really weird. And I don't want to like develop a sick attachment to this thing that I don't know where it came from. Right. Put it in the bubble. Also, that's uh, somebody, probably Michelini, was like, you put the baby in the thing. Right. You yeah, don't just the, leave it. You don't it, give it to the mother and then just go, okay, go home. <laughs> You gotta put it in the thing. Check it for vitals and stuff. Especially because it's really weird. So. Ideally, we'd put it in a room with like ten other babies, but there's so that a, but there they could any. get mixed up theoretically. But uh... and that being said, the, the baby bubble is also gonna scan the baby oh. to tell them like what's up with it. Yeah, what's going on with this baby? Yeah, computer, tell us what's up with the baby. What's up with this baby? They're like baby. <laughs> so they wheel uh, uh, Carol to her quarters uh -huh. because like. She had a baby, so right. she got to recover. She had no, she had Even no it pain, have... required no recovery. But we have this wheelchair. Put her in the wheelchair because that's what yeah. happens when is what you women do. Give birth to babies. So they wheel her out. So Wasp shows up. And she's like, "Hey, where, where's the proud mother? Like, I want to congratulate her." And Blake's like, "Oh, Wonder Man's taking her to a room. Don't bother her. She's just gone through a really weird traumatic experience." Right. And mm. Wasp's like, "I'll, I'll just, I'll just go with them. I'll help." And so she goes mm. there. And she's like, "Hey." How's the proud mom? Don't you want to hold the baby? Carol's like, are you fucking for real? <laughs> no. No, I don't want to hold the baby. We don't even know if it's a baby human. This is weird. Right. Don't you think this is weird? And she's like, oh. Oh, well, excuse me. <laughs> like, I'm just excited that there's a baby in the house. Right. And, you know, I just like babies. It's just weird. Uh, it's just weird it's that just you weird. don't. It's weird you don't. I mean, yeah. you had one and you don't even like, whoa. Yeah. It's it, as though postpartum depression were a thing. As though it's not... Fucking weird that this happened at all because it happens with vo virtually no provocation. Avengers 200, uh, in the last issue, Carol shows up and she's pregnant, and then in this one, she just gives a baby, give birth to a baby. And you're like, I I'm a hardcore Avengers fan, and I'm just reading these comics, and I'm like, uh, what's up with this? And why is everyone conspicuously like weird about it? Yeah. Why is everybody on board? Everything except for the, is super weird. Except for Donald Blake, except for Donald a Blake, dude. Who is Thor? Is he Thor? Is, he, is it one of those like he? He is Thor. Like okay. he's like, oh, they better not know I'm Thor. And what's hilarious is Donald Blake could think and talk like a regular person, and he knows he's Thor. And then he's a like, cuckoo on Thor. And he's like, well, the eighth early, I'm in a Ren Fair. <laughs> so, and yeah, a baby. Yes. No, Thor is not as excited. He, he, Thor never really gets a shot with the baby. Mm. Like, Thor doesn't go like, yay, to... verily, we don't have these in Asgard. Like, <laughs> no, there's none of, none of that. I like how you said, uh, like, a, like, a shot, like he was going to hit it with Mjolnir. Yeah. <laughs> Whack! I want a shot at the baby. <laughs> Hawkeye is the one who wants to take a shot at the baby, because he's like, I'm on board. This is weird. Okay, cool. Yay. We don't get enough of that, though. The Vision and Scarlet Witch, like, walk through the garden and talk about how <laughs> this baby and experience with Carol makes them feel, and that's all they do. Like... In every book I ever read with these two, they constantly like look at the world through the lens of how that affects them. Right. It's the most selfish fucking <laughs> Avengers I've ever seen. <laughs> well, doesn't Vision have the whole thing of like he's trying to understand like That's humanity? Just Dana. <laughs> Vision is like, I get it. I guess I'm basically a dude. I'm basically a guy. And then sometimes writers are like, oh wait, but he's a robot. <laughs> I guess it tracks for Wanda, she unmakes yeah. Well, she hasn't had the babies yet. Yeah. No, no, we're saying, but like, this tracks. This will. is, like, yeah, she's, this like... Is very, yeah. Well, Wanda's also, like, really flighty, and nobody really, like, knows how to write for her, so mm. she's... Plus, she, she's also, like, easily manipulated. Like, she's Magneto's daughter at this point, and so yeah. you know, she was originally, like, a member of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Right. You know, and then she's an Avenger, like, literally in the next issue. So it makes sense that she'd be self-centered if she was on a team called the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Particularly if she was raised by Magneto, a right. narcissist. Right. So, Yeah. <laughs> And then she's dating a robot who literally, like, you, you could program him to only be interested in one person, and that's you. you know, but <laughs> Vision's like, babies are fragile like these roses, you know, shut up. And uh, <laughs> Wow, deep, Vision. Yeah. And, so deep. Well, Wasp but, and, you have, like, uh, access to, like, all written works, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> you can be as poetic as Shakespeare, <laughs> and you're talking about roses, you, you jackass. But, uh, you know, uh, 
Wasp and Yocasta are talking, which is hilarious because Yocasta is basically a copy of Wasp, so she's like she's talking to herself. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Wasp is like, and she was a real bitch to me. And Yocasta's like, I bet she was. Yeah, like they're basically <laughs> just bad mouthing. No, they're, they're more like Yocasta's like, oh man, like babies, my weird robotic programming human life what is this you know that kind of thing and she's like oh well you know i don't understand either maybe it's because you're me her her meanwhile what uh, the hell is going on what is this they were telling a story about like what would happen if one of the avengers just had a baby out of nowhere it would disrupt the whole dichotomy of the family and everyone would start musing about babies about and what babies. it means and... well because like how old are these people supposed to be maybe they're thinking about babies maybe right. they never thought about it and they're like oh my god i'm a 30 year old in tights and i never even started a family like what's my problem this is where we need a batman yeah who's like, like no this is fucking weird <laughs> i took the dna immediately when the baby came out and i analyzed it while you assholes were all talking to each other meanwhile uh beast and hawkeye are playing pool uh, this sequence is boys talking about the lady having a baby, but th they're more focused on the game mm -hmm. and how, like, Hawkeye's good at pool, Beast isn't. Mm. They put some money on the game, and then Beast calculates the trajectory of a shot using his nifty keen TI-59 <laughs> brand new calculator. Oh. <laughs> He calculates the perfect shot he needs to take and then performs it uh -huh. and then, you know, hustles the hustler. Right. And, you know, <sighs> makes off with his lunch money. And it's just cool. Great. Uh -huh. like good advertising. Again, brand synergy. Right. You know, we, we're not just trying to get that delicious hostess money. Maybe we can get some, maybe we can get some, some Texas Instruments money. Right. There's going to be many disappointed children who get that calculator and no, find that it, it does cannot. not help at pool at all. No, but you can make a woo using numbers and X and Y axes. And a couple of years later, you could play really shitty text-based games. <laughs> so Beast and Hawkeye are interrupted by Cap and Iron Man who are like, you gotta, you, you gotta, you gotta see this shit. It's freaking weird. <laughs> this is off the chain. And so Blake and... Yellow jacket are analyzing the baby. The baby's like a toddler. Right. Yep. And they're like, uh, the baby's a toddler. Like, it grew right before my fucking eyes. Right. And it, it's like, it's trying to talk. Like, it, it, it's freaking me out. Why isn't anybody, like... They're all freaking out. I, but, like, you know, most of these like people are... Trying Avengers, like, trying to figure it out. Well, like, where have you been? Like... You know, no, they what do. have you had contact with that might she's, explain She's this. like, I don't know, and I don't remember. She has no recollection Shouldn't they be like going out, like, doing research? Absolutely. Or, like, looking at video footage to yes. see where she's been and yes, stuff? Yes, they should. Don't they have all this technology and two robots? Yeah, <laughs> call the Fantastic Four. Like, they absolutely something. should. They should have definitely done that. Like, so, this is not okay. <laughs> no, it's very weird. It's weird. It gets weirder. Yeah. So, th let's take an interlude. Okay, because mm. you realize you've been reading this book for like a while and there's been no friggin' cool shit. Right. I mean, yes, the Avengers are all head to toe wearing their colorful costumes while they're talking about babies and life, but like, <laughs> they're not fighting anything. Nobody's punching no. anything. yeah. So uh, we meet They haven't like, even left the mansion. No, we, we, they, 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 they barely do. Uh, one dude like gets off the subway, goes up, goes up top, you know, in the middle of the city. Yeah. But it's, uh, you know, it's like 17th century Victoria, England. And he's oh, like, where the, the pies are. The fruit pies are right oh. there. Oh. That was like in a different time frame. No! Like, the, see, pies I told you, the pies are totally in canon. The hostess universe is not canon. <laughs> it's a different earth. Although, inter interestingly enough, I should point out that in Spider-Verse, the, the comic book series, they do establish that the hostess pies universe is in the Marvel multiverse, and Morlun does go there <laughs> and kill the Spider-Man of the Hostess Pies universe. Does he also Great. have a delicious pie? I think he likens eating Spider-Man to, to a, a delicious pie. Hostess cherry pie. You know, something to that effect. Of course. That as is cool as I described. Horrible. So Wonder Man goes to Carol's quarters, and he's like, hey, Carol, what's up? Uh, you're wearing your Ms. Marvel costume. She's like, yep. Yeah, you're wearing your sunglasses inside, so, you know. So, what are you saying? <laughs> Pot, meat kettle. But uh, but she's like, I mean, I, I my delivery was nothing. I had no recovery period. Like, the wheelchair was for show. Right. I might as well, everyone else is wearing their costumes, I might as well put on my Ms. Marvel costume. Okay. Yeah. Fair and he's enough. like, well, do you want to come downstairs and meet your son? He's like, she's like, no! That is not my son. Not my son. Weird, weird mutant thing. Mm -hmm. Looks like a baby. Not. I'm, I'm, don't, don't confuse me dressing in my superhero costume 
as me trying to tell you that everything's totally cool. Yeah. It's not. Right. This is still weird. Meanwhile, Beast, I guess, left the mansion because he bought a whole bunch of boy toys. You know, like baseball like gloves stick and hockey and, sticks and, yeah. and balls and of, of, every, of every sport denomination. He's got a backwards cap on. And he's bringing it to the boy who is now like, I don't know, six or seven. Yeah. And he's like, hey, Junior, here's your toys. And he's like, those seem to be all the toys that a boy at my age would require. Yeah. And Beast <laughs> is like, oh. Uh, how do You're you know that? Now. And, and he's like, oh, I'm sorry, uh, I, I prefer a laser uh, to your baseball bat that I could possibly use to work on some highfalutin technological, you know, endeavor that I'm working on. But I guess I'll, 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 I'll take your, your toy paraphernalia for now. And he's like, uh, what? <laughs> you and, want a laser? Yeah, and it's great because like Beast is like, this is weird. And you see Blake and Yellow Jacket, they're like, it's been weird. Yeah, we've been here the whole time. You left for several minutes. <laughs> Literally that. The little boy is like, no, it's not that weird at all, actually. Uh, and I'll be happy to explain it to you. Yeah, no, actually it is really weird. I've been on this earth for like 30 years. You've been here for like 30 minutes. Yeah. I and, think I know what's weird better than you do. Yeah. He's, he's like, like, please, by the way, my name is Marcus. Don't don't refer to me as boy anymore. Like, I have a name. And he's like, okay. And then Cap shows up because the best person that needs to... Figure out how the situation is working is Captain fucking America. <laughs> and he's like, okay, let's call you Marcus. Marcus, All right. what the Marcus. hell is going on here? <laughs> and he's like, I'll be able to explain it to you because like, honestly, this body won't be agile enough to be able to perform the tasks I need to affect. What? For a few minutes. So I might as well indulge you with a, with a tail. While I'm right, waiting well, I, well, for my waiting body to catch to turn into an adult. And then Hawkeye shoots him in the face. He's right. like, yeah. he was becoming a monster. This, <laughs> is not, this is not going anywhere good. <laughs> nope. We gotta put a stop to this. Uh, so he's like, We were fine before the kid came along. We'll be fine without him. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> no one's gonna be upset. So, Kai, so Cap's like, so where'd you come from? And he's like, my mom. And he's like, <laughs> okay. All right. All right. And, and, Mm -hmm. And who's your father? And he's like me. And he's like, okay, if you're not gonna take this seriously, then I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have weird arguments with with mutant children. Get away from me. And he leaves. Do you know what your mom's name is? <laughs> you're right. He doesn't. He doesn't how like how would you? How do you know what your name Cat is? Cat gets two questions in and quits. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, I can't no! deal with this kid. This is weird. Tony, you're up. Leave. So Wonder Man and Yellow Jacket are watching Marcus using like lasers and other like. Super science technology. Yeah, just let him before. go for it. It's let him go for it. He's busy. Him. I mean, you know, he said he wanted a laser. We got lasers let, all over the place. Let the weird, super growing <laughs> baby man thing. You know what? I want to see where this goes. Yeah. In the laser. We, we've already let this go too far. Right. We might as well we might see as it well to its conclusion. Cross another Rubicon. <laughs> Blake's on watching the creepy boy duty, and he's like. This is fucking weird. I may need to call Thor at some point. Like, right. I may need to become Thor and hit this guy with a hammer. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. <laughs> Jarvis calls in. He's like, hey, we're getting a lot of prank calls on the hotline about, like, because back in the day, uh, if you had a problem, you could just call the Avengers. They have like right. an 800 number. And you're like, oh, no. Ultron's attacking the city. <laughs> okay, beep, beep, well, beep, 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 beep. for Ultron, press four. You know, like, <laughs> literally that. Like, I, I read many a Spider-Man comic and Michelinie wrote Spider-Man as well, so he probably actually worked that in, like yeah. the hotline, and then carried it over in Spider-Man. Spider-Man constantly calls the Avengers, and he's like, always given the runaround, and he's like stuck in a, like a loop. He's like, I left a message with the Avengers, I hope they got it, and they usually do. But uh, yeah, he never actually calls and reaches Jarvis. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, Jarvis like, we're getting a lot of prank calls about like, you know, dinosaurs and like, <laughs> Jack the Ripper and stuff. Right. And they're like, okay. So the whole world's going crazy. Mm -hmm. Is Jarvis aware of the baby? Yeah, okay. he, he's stayed out of it. He's mm. like, no. At no point is Jarvis like, like that oh boy, concern, <laughs> right? Yeah, he's like, this is, sounds like an Avengers problem. <laughs> right. So These uh, cookies, this is a Jarvis problem. Yeah, this is Jarvis <laughs> They're not gonna bake themselves. That's right. Uh, the way that you indicate that Yocasta wants to bang Vision is with this pose, mm, where she enters yeah. the room where Vision is analyzing Marcus's vitals. Right. She's just like, may I come in? He's like, oh yeah. Uh, but then Wanda shows up and she's like, oh, I gotta go. Mm -hmm. Wanda's like, hey Vision, I'm looking at these files too. They look really interesting. You know, she doesn't know. <laughs> You're a mutant from one of our mountains. You don't know nothing about this, what's happening here. 
That's so a... this is where you're seeing like, uh oh. Like, yeah. Uh oh. Wanda's trouble got... in paradise. <laughs> right. And plus, she like... can't possibly compete with this other robot. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the last panel is like Jocasta's the bride moment where it's like, wee, wee. <laughs> That's totally what that is. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to deal with this. <laughs> At least Vision has fun, colorful colors. Like, Jocasta is Ultron colors. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Ms. Marvel oh, finally makes her way yourself, downstairs. Right? Like she's like almost like chrome. Yeah. So when you look at her, it's like seeing yourself. Mm. Well, the other thing that I don't like about the Yocasta Vision pairing is that like they both have the same dad. Oh, yeah. yeah. So Ms. Marvel comes downstairs and she bumps into Wasp. Oh, super supportive and awesome, I bet. Literally that. She's like, hey, oh, I'm really? sorry I gave you a hard time, Wasp. Yeah, because Carol. Wait, Carol's apologizing? What's going to apologize to Janet? Because, you know, she was really curt with her. Right, because Janet's really had a rough day. Yeah. From that one time, that one time when... That this poor woman went through this really bizarre experience. So then uh, Carol and, uh, and, and Janet leave because Janet's like, come on, let's go meet your son. Let's go. Let's do what I wanted in the You're first place. You're the worst. <laughs> also, uh, for no reason, you know, remember, 200th issue, uh, Wasp gets a brand new costume. Oh. So just, just point of point of order. Uh, Wasp <laughs> is wearing a new costume in this book. Oh, they don't Wasp, mention think, it or anything? They don't. Maybe that's why Wasp is being so catty with Ms. Marvel. Yeah. yeah she's, like, Carol she, didn't notice. She's like, oh, noticed. sure, you had out of a weird bizarro baby on the day I debut my new <laughs> costume. Right, you, <laughs> it's just me. like you. It's so you. It's so Carol it's Danvers. It's always got to be about Carol Danvers. <laughs> <laughs> so... So they, they usher Carol into the room, and Carol meets with Marcus, who is a full-grown adult. Yeesh. And he's like, hello, mother, and he is just the biggest look creepy-looking dude you've ever seen. Yeah, wow. He's got these, like, eyebrows that, like, yeah, they they look like Spock that, eyebrows. Yeah, they did that a lot during this time period. Like, Dr. Mm. Strange has them. Yeah, yeah. Magneto has them, too. Yeah. You see them all over so the place. So they look exotic. I so guess. she's like, yeah. So yeah. she's like, um, so what the hell? And he's like, well, I'm happy to explain this, but... There's a dinosaur and aliens attacking the city, and more specifically our mansion. Oh, so we need to we need to focus. So there's aliens too. Well, there's and like, a World War Two or World War One biplane. That's, that's right. The, they have the the pies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where the pies came. I from. guess. Anyway, so like I'm getting these pies. Michelin is like, oh shit, we gotta get back into the action. There's too many talking. Right, something's gotta blow. Up. Get back into the action. There hasn't been any action. Remember, no, we no. gotta start the action. Well, there were dinosaurs. We were, we were, we were, I saw a dinosaur wandering around in the background of a panel. Yes. Yeah, that was that's called that's a Chekhov's gun. You you were setting up the dinosaur. Now we're paying off the dinosaur. Right. You're welcome. So the Avengers yeah. spring into action. And the dinosaur is drawn wrong, by the way. His tail's dragging on the ground. It's not accurate. No. No. Well, They're, what kind of dinosaur is this? It looks like a T-Rex. I mean, it could be. Yeah. Maybe he's not a dinosaur. He's a Godzilla. I mean, he's way bigger than a dinosaur, I mean, so is... yeah. It's a man in a suit dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> it's a rubber suit dinosaur. It's a rubber right suit there. dinosaur. Yeah. So uh, while some of the Avengers go fight the dinosaur, like a knight mm. on a horse. Yeah. Okay. Comes and attacks Wanda. He's like, you must be a witch. My my sworn duty is to slay oh, witches. Oh, yeah, because so. you look just like a witch would have looked to this knight. Yep. So he goes and tries to kill <laughs> he's her. Like, he's like, listen, you're too sexy. I can't handle this. Yeah. yeah. That, the There's way definitely the, something up with you. The, the fights are handled in typical comic book fashion. Like, they, we set it up. And then they defeat them. There's no, there's no tension or anything. Right. The only thing that's worth noting, I think, in the fights is that that knight gets like a big fat lesson in gender equality because <laughs> he is almost single handedly defeated by Scarlet Witch. Mm. And then Jocasta shows up and he's going to fight her too. <laughs> and he's like, I'll not be bested by women. And he is quickly bested <laughs> by women. And he is like, I give the fuck up. <laughs> that's it. I'm going back to Lyndhurst, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Got a show in about 20 minutes. Exactly. <laughs> Solid reference. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Cap, Hawkeye, and Beast are attacked by Native Americans. Oh. There are some inappropriate references. If this was uh, Warner Brothers or Disney property, there'd be a disclaimer at the beginning <laughs> that says this was written at a different time. But that time was 1980 when everyone knew it was inappropriate to do it anyway. Right. Is Cap the one making them? No. Oh, wow, that's no, fantastic. No, because Cap was progressive all the way back. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Yay, Cap. He's, you know, uh, Beast says that he wasn't expecting to take, no, uh, he says, 
Beast punches a bunch of Native Americans as if it's poke a hauntus week because he's poking them with his fists. You know, it's like, wow. don't do that. That but, wasn't even funny. No, but it's like, it will. it is what will pass for humor because Beast said it. Right, I see. When you said he quipped and so forth, I was yeah. like, well, how bad could it be? And this is the bottom. But pretty bad. This yeah. is, this rock is the bottom. This is what Beast says, rock bottom. <laughs> it's like, just, just don't say anything. I gotta fill the air with my voice. But uh, while Cap and Beast are fighting Native Americans, Hawkeye's like, this is clearly the weird mutant baby's fault. I'm going to shoot him with my arrow. Oh, now? Right. Now that he's a grown man and can stop you? Yeah. He's like, well, now, no. now it's not weird. He's like, now I feel right. like a total dick. Well, now you can fight back, theoretically. So, yeah. yeah. Even though I'm going to sneak up on him. Yeah. So, <laughs> so while all that's happening, a few other key Avengers who could easily stop this whole thing, like Wonder Man, who's a being made of pure effing energy, uh, are just standing around watching Marcus feverishly try and finish building his complicated super science machine. <laughs> and they're just like, Is he Whoa! just wearing a towel? Yeah, well, that's what he was born with. Nobody gave him clothes. There's they, no they way. Didn't have time. That's not the same towel. That's the. That, that's yeah. They gave him a bigger towel. He's like, blanket. I need a bigger. He's towel. like Superman. <laughs> oh, that's like the blanket that he was born. That he was with. born in. Oh, okay. And he turned into a loincloth like five minutes ago. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, they're like, we gotta go. Come on, Marcus, knock off your little science prize. No, you don't understand, woman. I've gotta build this machine, or or, or, or we'll never get back to normal. What are you talking about? Could you please just explain something? Never. I need to be vague to. <laughs> Pad the runtime. There's no book. time. So uh, then they make some executive decisions. Okay, we'll let Marcus work on the machine. Dr. Donna Blake, this is getting too hairy. Get out of here. Get into this broom closet. He's like, okay, Thor. <laughs> so he goes in there, becomes Thor, comes out. Wonder Man goes outside. He gets hit by like a laser cannon from the future. And he's like, ah. And he's like, and man. And then a snake grabs him. A prehistoric snake <laughs> attacks him. It's just the movie Anaconda. Yeah. yeah. And he throws it at like a like a bat pterodactyl monster. Oh. It could be a dinosaur, it could be an alien from the future. Either way, it doesn't oh, yeah, matter. Yeah, whatever, it's all uh, good. But he hits it with him, and then Thor swings into action, and he, like, he creates a whirlwind, collects all of the complicated bullshit that everyone's being attacked by into a typhoon, <laughs> And it's then, an out of place object targeting tornado. Yes. I was gonna say, point of fact, that's a tornado. That is yeah. completely a tornado. <laughs> and, uh, and and then just makes it all go away. Or at the very least, like keeps it <laughs> in the tornado. Launches it into space. Off to the Savage Land <laughs> with yeah, you. They, where this you, is where you probably you came from. <laughs> What's funny is they're not from the Savage Land, so they would just die. But uh, <laughs> they would be okay. Yeah, they'll spice up the uh, genetic structure for oh, the dinosaurs yeah. down there. Yeah, get yeah. some, di get some diversity, diversity of uh, yeah. geneticism in there, yeah. Sauron will go have a field day out there. He's like, ooh! I don't know. Jarvis gets attacked by a musketeer. It doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> well, how how many different eras can we cram into here? Yeah. Is he, is he trying to sell Jarvis a tasty three musketeers bar? <laughs> <laughs> he might as well. <laughs> While Hawkeye's trying to make his way to Marcus to shoot him with an arrow, he also bumps into what is obviously Conan. What? Oh, yeah? He's obviously Conan. He hates him with the equivalent of a boxing glove arrow. Yeah. And he says, take that barbarian. Okay. Yeah. Barbarian. But it is Conan. Yeah. Did they have him at this Marvel point? Marvel had the Conan yeah. publishing license, but they didn't cross him over too much. So, okay. Mm, you know. Are there but, any uh, samurai that show no, up? No, no, no. Or... It's, just, it's just, just biplanes, dinosaurs, aliens, okay. and, and, and Conan. All right. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and knights and, you know, whatnot. And a musketeer. Right. Uh, like woolly mammoths show no, up. No, no, it's a, saber toothed cats. We, they, the 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 fun stuff is clearly like editorially added after the fact. Like <laughs> uh, it, you needed, it's it's weaved into the structure. But like I feel like Shooter was like, there's no way that these children are gonna sit here and read this talky book for the 200th issue. Right. You now, gotta put some dinosaurs. Now, of course, Nickelodeon will eventually take over Iron Man and Spider Man, and those will be just chock full of Peter Parker and Tony Stark nonsense that just goes on and on and on, which I enjoy, by the way. But uh, for now, we're selling an Avengers book. Right. right. We need to have them fight a dinosaur or something. <laughs> are, there, are there any like 1920s gangsters? No, James like Cagney doesn't show people? up and hit Iron Man with a Tommy gun, unfortunately. <laughs> or some Robin Hood and his Merry Men. I tell, it's almost done. Like, we're almost <laughs> okay. through with it. But, uh, you know, Thor scooped it all up. Uh, yeah, it's all gone. Uh, at least the ones on the outside. Right. But, uh, you know, Carol's trying to get Marcus to leave because, like, it's still dangerous and he's been 
just working on this stupid machine the Why whole time. Why does she care? Yeah. Like, Marcus, you're my child. You're my child. son. Because she has to for the sake of the story. She has to for the story yeah. to continue. So yep. needs her to do that. So she's like, come on. And he's like, I, I just leave me alone. Like, I got to finish work on this. She's like, I'm not going to let you. And he's like, okay. Like, and get then, out of my room. So he just covers her face and he knocks her out. And he's like, I'm sorry, my love. He covers her face. I'm sorry, he, he does this. Yeah, he does that. He does the face off move. But it also knocks her out. Probably she's just so embarrassed by doing that that right. like, it just, she faints. But no, the reality is it just it just knocks her out. Right. And then he calls her his love. And then Hawkeye's like, what? And then Hawkeye shows up and he's like, I knew you were a bad guy. What have you done? Blah. Yep. And so he's like, fuck your machine. <laughs> so he shoots his arrow at the machine that Marcus spent his entire life building. <laughs> <laughs> My life's work. Yes. <laughs> All 45 minutes of it. <laughs> but he literally, he shoots it with a bomb arrow. It blows up and you can see the look on Marcus's face. <laughs> no. <laughs> He's just, he is just beside himself. He's what? Paralyzed by pain. Okay, it's like, high five. Anybody? Yeah, Great like, shot. He's like crying. He is, he's weeping. What the hell is going on? <laughs> this is insanity. I know, I know. So Hawkeye's like, okay, now you're up. You're up next, diaper boy. So he whips out his arrow and, you know, Marcus is ready to fight him. And then Thor shows up, drops down a lightning bolt. Breaks him up and he's like, all right, I threw all that shit, you know, over there into New Jersey or whatever. But New Jersey's I, like, ah! They're like, nope, not it's our problem. It's in the Meadowlands, it's fine. <laughs> exactly. They won't build Xanadu for another 25 years. <laughs> There's just a lot of toxic waste and dead bodies. That's, That's right. Yeah. And that'll be a few more. Yeah, the yeah. mob won't notice. But, uh, you know, Thor's like, okay, explain yourself. And he's like, No! <laughs> I'll tell you nothing. You'll have to kill me first. What? And they're like... Hawkeye's like... Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Okay, chief. <laughs> you got it. Honestly, I was aiming for you. <laughs> don't tell them that, though. <laughs> yeah, don't tell them that. I'm an excellent marksman. I don't want to lose my code name. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but, but Ms. Marvel shows up and she's like, What the fuck is happening? Why? Why would you want to die? Like, why, why are you going to fight these guys? We, right. we, we, you know, they, they, they raised you. <laughs> <laughs> They're like your uncles, practically. Yeah. And he's like, I'll destroy anyone who gets my way. And she's like, well, then you can start with me because the Avengers are my family. And he's like, okay, all right. So here's the deal. <laughs> when the machine was destroyed, my only chance for salvation was gone. So it was either oblivion or death. So I tried to goad the Avengers into killing me just now. But you saw through my ruse, or at the very least, you stopped me from doing it. And... So I'll just explain to you why I'm doomed and where I came from. I'll just, I'll just spend the rest of the book explaining the context for what the hell has been happening this whole time. Right. And, and that is... And they're like, well, why didn't you just start from the beginning of the book? Like, why didn't right. when you could talk just say that? And he's like, because you wouldn't believe me or you wouldn't listen to me because I am a descendant of your nemesis Immortus. And they're like, oh... And he's like, would you, would you have listened to me, Hawkeye, if you had known that I was the sire of Immortus? And he's like, mm, no. <laughs> he's like, well, then I rest my case. He's like, no, I, mean, I still kind of want to shoot who, you. Who the hell's Immortus? Immortus was introduced as like a Time Lord or the Time Lord. A Time Lord. Yes. A hmm. Time Lord? <laughs> <laughs> but in point of fact, is actually Kang the Conqueror. No. Oh. But from another timeline. Is he better? Oh. No. Damn. Kang's cool sometimes. For anyway. another timeline. Well, doesn't from, Kang the Conqueror in multiple timelines? Yes, he is. Immortus is from the 30th century. Basically, oh. Kang will become Immortus. Oh. But they don't know that yet. Immortus has access to Limbo, which is like outside of time. So okay. like, time can't affect him. With all the unbaptized babies. Naturally. You know, this is a different limbo. This <laughs> okay. is the non-religious. This is the... This is, the uh, is, this, is this the magic limbo? Yeah. Like uh -huh. magic, the mutant? No. No, it's not her limbo That's either. That's another limbo. It's a, it's a third limbo. limbo. Yeah. Is this the one where you hold a pole up between two people and play some like you know fun? No, that's D limbo. Oh right. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> at one point, while like Immortus is wasting time in limbo, he sees through like a time window this sexy lady who is shipwrecked, and she's he knows because of his mastery over time that she's gonna die. He's not gonna make it. Right. So he just pulls her out, and then they fall in love, and they bang, and they have a kid. And then what he didn't know was that, like, because she's a human person and not, like, a time master, that 
she had to go back to original time at some point. So eventually she just faded away and went he back to original time. He didn't know time. that. No, he didn't. This is the first time he's done this. This is the first time, yeah. Well, because we're just making it up as we go. Sure. So she's gone, and then eventually he got screwed over, and he disappeared. And so their baby that they had, who was Marcus, was just stuck in limbo by himself. And the Langoliers were coming for and the it. Langle <laughs> no, because limbo, Langoliers can't get there. Oh. Uh, they, They've already come by. They've already come by. Oh, okay. <laughs> so... Marcus is just trapped in limbo with no one to talk to or interact with, and he's sad. But he still has access to, like, all the windows and shit, like, to see, like, time. And he reasons that because he was born in limbo, that he is stuck there and can't, like, you know, he's he won't, like, fade away like his mom, and he's, like, not an Avengers supervillain, so he won't be killed like Immortus. Right. Who, of course, would be later established as Kang, but it doesn't matter right now. They think he's a different character. But... So he's like, well, wait a minute. If I was born in time on Earth, then I could like circumvent, it's like dogma, how like the, the angels figure out like, well, if, if we use this like loophole in Catholic doctrine, right. we could get it. Like if I use this like the birthing loophole of the, the time laws, then I can technically like exist someplace and like talk to people and stuff. So he uses his like time window technology or whatever to notice that Carol Danvers is such a character who could like handle it. You know, I can't just pick any random right. shit. Right, they'd be destroyed. Right, or whatever. No, it's just, I needed Carol because we're kicking her off the Avengers. So he right. picked Carol and so he pulled Carol out of the Avengers Quinjet in Avengers 197. Oh. And then brought her to Limbo. But like, in order to give his essence to her. You know, he's got to do it the old fashioned way, if you know what I mean. And he's not like a rapist. So he's like, I have to get her to limbo. That That's kidnapping. I will cut into that. Right, I did so do that. I'm going to kidnap her and then I'm bring her to limbo. But I'm not like a creep. So I'm just going to woo her the old fashioned way. And I got like mastery over time too because I was born in limbo. So like he gets like Shakespeare to write sonnets and Beethoven to write symphonies and all kinds of other ways to woo her. And eventually, with the help of some of Immortus's machines, which do overwrite some of her will, they do eventually work their mojo and get her to want to sleep with him. So he absolutely is a rapist, but we're trying to gloss over it as much as we can. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> what, what about the sonnets? Uh, you know, and yeah. The, and the, and the yeah, music. but I did some nice it? stuff. I did yeah. some nice stuff. You know, it's like I balanced it out. Like, yeah, like, listen, did I use <laughs> time technology to like make you more interested in banging me? Yes, but <laughs> no other woman on Earth can say definitively that Shakespeare wrote a sonnet for them. <laughs> oh, is that? So, weigh the pros and cons. <laughs> <laughs> and you tell me, well, you know what, actually, uh, the, 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 the other really complicated thing is you really don't have a say in this. Right. Because I also wiped your memories, so like, you're kind of like a blank slate when you're in limbo. So it's like, she doesn't even know that she's Carol Danvers, she just knows that she's like a sexually adult woman. Oh, so he like used the Rufy 9000 on her. That's yeah. right. Actually. Yeah, which is, you know, from the 30th century or whatever. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he bangs her and then infuses his essence into her. So it's not that he's like, a, because I guess he's because he's a time baby or whatever. It's not just that he has regular reproductive or, like systems. It's not like he made a right. He made himself in her and made it a little less like complicated. You know, like, okay, like, yeah, I, I Trojan horsed myself <laughs> in your womb, but... I made it so it happened real fast. Right. So minimal discomfort. And it didn't hurt. It didn't hurt. It just, I practically fell out of you. Right. You know, I used you as like, okay, like, yes. Did I use you like Bilbo used <laughs> like a barrel in the Elf King Hall to get out of here? Sure. Or like a drug mule uses his intestines. Yeah, in right. Order to... That's actually a much more apt metaphor for what I did to you. But if like I raped the drugs into you. <laughs> so... He's like, anyway, but I realized as I was becoming into maturity that it didn't work. And that while I was here, that time anomalies would occur while I was outside of limbo. Oh. So I was building a machine that would generate energy to stabilize me in this reality. But Hawkeye broke it, so I'm going to go back to limbo now. Uh, Hawkeye's like, oh, look, I'm the bad guy. Right. Oh, yeah. excuse me. I'm the only sane one here. 
I'm still, I'm not upset that I broke it. Right. I you told your story yeah. and explained everything, and I'm like, no, I still well, made the no, right but call, like, though. I went through a lot of effort, and it's like you, it's like I didn't right. have to do any of it. Right, like I did it for nothing. Like, you I made raped it. Carol Danvers for no reason. <laughs> so that's really your fault. So like. really, you're the monster. <laughs> So he's what? No, I was being like, okay, like, <laughs> fuck this guy. <laughs> Can I kill him now? He's yeah. not even like a person. <laughs> he's not even from here. He's not even from around here. <laughs> so he's like, anyway, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to leave, like, because yeah, I, I can't build because, because of you, Hawkeye. Yeah, yeah. Well, he doesn't you. really blame Hawkeye too much, but like he should. But uh, <laughs> but I don't really blame him at all. But anyway, he's like, uh, I need to go back because otherwise the time anomalies are going to get more severe. Yeah, you do need to go back. You better go right well, now. He, he, and he has like a choice. You like, get he the hell out of here, man. You need to leave. You needed to leave like ten minutes ago. <laughs> and she's like, and I'm going with him. What? Because I need to leave the book. What? Yeah, because she's like. I, I'm, I'm wooed by your, so, your sordid tale. I feel bad for you. You know, you're so alone. And you're so desperate for companionship that you did all that. You went through all that trouble for, you know, for, for a little companionship. Well, I, I'm willing to give that to you. Plus, I like, have no good place here anyway. And I, I'm missing some memories about, like, those experiences. Like, I'd like to hear that sonnet again. So I'm going to go with you to Limbo, and we'll live happily ever after there. And the Avengers are like... I think somebody, maybe Iron Man, is like, are you sure? But everybody else is like, good for you, yay! Like, happily ever after, woohoo, what are we going to do now? Like, we're, they're so concerned about and that. Janet's like, check out my new costume! Hey, did anyone notice that Janet got a new costume? <laughs> ah, all is right with the Finally! <laughs> so, like, bye, Carol! Bye! Bye, bye. enjoy Limbo! <sighs> so, Thor uses Mjolnir and he transports them to Limbo. Oh, he could just go there. Yeah, yeah. And when he, when they do... All the time people disappear and go back to the original time. Well, why don't they just tell him, like, well, just give us the plans for the machine and we'll build you one and you can just do this all over again uh, and then this time you can it stay. it's really kind of dicey that we did it in the first place. Like, we're not gonna, we're not gonna make Carol give birth again. Well, she's comfortable with him now. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But they don't. There should at least be a follow-up where, like, he asks her, like... Yeah. So, you know, we've been hanging out, we've right. been spending some time together. You already gave birth to me once. You know, we can do this again. I, and I, feel like, like, I know how to build a machine. Yeah, I, I know how to build it now, it. and like, no one's going to destroy it this time because we already explained the whole thing. Yeah. So, <laughs> could you do me a solid? Mm -hmm. Again, another solid? Yeah. And don't forget, this time, Beethoven wrote a whole, a, whole, a whole symphony. And this time, it'll be totally voluntary. Yeah, yeah. this time, though. So that's the status quo for Carol is that she goes to Limbo with her husband's son, Marcus, and they live happily ever after. But they don't, and it's fucking weird and complicated, and don't worry, because it didn't take like 30 years for people to go, oh, that's fucking weird. <laughs> Literally everybody was like that immediately afterwards. Right. Especially people like Chris Claremont, who, as we've talked about, is like notoriously covetous of his characters. And he's like, oh, what? <laughs> And what's great is Michelotti didn't even want to do that. He was like, he set up the, the pregnancy thing and he was going to reveal that because like Carol has Cree DNA kind of from some part of Captain Marvel imprinting onto her <laughs> right. that the Cree Supreme Intelligence, an established bad guy, mm. he uses Carol to try and create a human Cree hybrid. Okay. And that would become that makes a, a new lot villain. more sense. And that was the plan. And Shooter's like, nah, Shooter does what he does best. He shoots it down. <laughs> that sounds that sounds like a yeah. That yeah. Sounds like a shooter. I wow. mean like Shooter is responsible for like everything you like about Marvel. And also a lot of things you don't. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he's got like, a lot of ideas. And also like he was editor in chief, but he's also credited as part of the story consultant yeah. on this. Uh, so, you know. I, let me ask you this. Why does Carol need to be pregnant with any weird with thing? <laughs> well, yeah, well, because we need to get her off the Avengers. Why not? Right. Being pregnant is going to be that thing. Why like, not Beast? Once you have right. a kid, you got to quit your job beast. and yeah. take care of it. Right, exactly. So. Yeah, yeah. But well, except that the baby was, of course, always going to be an adult monster. Right. Whether it was her rapist or a new Cree human hybrid monster that was going to fight the Avengers. Either way. Right. So the, 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 the postscript to this is that Claremont was outraged. Women, <laughs> readers, were outraged. Yeah. And there's, a, there's an article that was about it. It was, came out in uh, one of the publications shortly thereafter. Mm -hmm. It was like, this was rape. 
Yeah. Like, even in the 80s, they were like, no. Right. <laughs> and uh, and it, was, it was a problem forever. And, of course, Claremont was like, can I fix this, please? And they're like, sure. So he wrote an Avengers book that came out after this, uh, which firmly established that Carol quits the Avengers and goes and joins the X-Men, which is what he's working on anyway. Mm. He's like, okay, I can't trust you people to work on characters that I wrote for, so I'll just put them on teams that I'm writing for. Right, I'll just take care of them and So what happens since you can't. Carol like, just arrives back on Earth with no memory of herself, and Spider-Woman finds her, and she's like, I know a psychic who can fix this. I'll call Professor Charles Xavier. Oh. So Spider-Woman calls Chuck. Chuck goes into her mind. Chuck helps her fill in some of the gaps. He's not afraid to go into people's minds He's and just to muck it. around. That's right. So they bring... She hasn't been violated enough. Exactly. So they bring her <laughs> to the X-Men, and uh, she stays there. They fill in the gaps. She calls the Avengers. The Avengers show up, and they're like, Hey, Carol, what's up? How, how, what, what's going on? Is the honeymoon over? And she's like, Yeah, it's over. <laughs> when I got to Limbo, Marcus didn't account... Because, like, you know how, like... And what's great is Claremont is such a genius because like they, they establish this dumbass bullshit about like well I was born in limbo so I'm stuck in limbo but if I'm born on earth then I'm then I can be tethered to earth but like I'm still from limbo like I'm a different thing so you know like I can't <laughs> it's stay gonna mess here. some stuff up so yeah. like he goes back to limbo but because he was born on earth limbo doesn't protect him so he just like he drinks the wrong grail he's like <laughs> <laughs> he just shrivels up into dust <laughs> And eventually she's like, she figures out a couple of things on like, she pulls some, you know, levers and dials and she like plops back out of limbo onto Earth and she's like, out of here. And when she gets back, she's like, yeah, fuck you guys. And she proceeds to call out every one of the Avengers, oh. points out every line they said in the book that was unhelpful or like tone deaf to the situation. Uh -huh. She's like, I was raped by a a stranger and I has having his baby and you all were like picking out like booties and buying him <laughs> toys and stuff like you're gross <laughs> and so she's like you all should be ashamed of yourselves and I'm staying with the X-Men and the X-Men are like I mean she's got a point there you know we are you guys do you. suck you guys do suck I mean you get 200 issues and that was the story you went with I mean like, the X-Men you know? <laughs> we got Wolverine so literally like that's how it leaves Carol joins the Avengers and she's like directly connected with them. Uh, that's also a cool issue because like Rogue fights the Avengers and like absorbs Thor's powers and stuff. Because oh. she was a Brotherhood of Evil mutant as well. Yeah. So that's where it ends up ultimately is Marcus turns to dust because right. the, 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 the quicker we forget about him the better. Right. And we just need to get him out of here. Get, just get, get out of here forever. Bullshit. Don't ever bring him back. Yep. It's a problem for everybody. And uh, so they, you know, and, and Carol, like, because Claremont's a continuity guy, it's not like, it didn't happen, or uh, he, right. made, he made like, a copy no, of happened. Carol. Like, no, it was nope, just... I watched uh, it happen. That happened. Deal with it. Yep. <laughs> she does as best she can. Yeah. And she, like, she's, she's strong, but, like, not nearly as... As, as harsh as I would be with the Avengers. Like, she was like, it's not cool, and you guys are messed up, and you're gross, and you said a bunch of stupid bullshit. Right. But, uh, you know, maybe we can hang out sometime. And <laughs> they leave, and they, like, they leave with, with their tails between their legs. Right. Some of them literally. And they get on the plane, and, like, I just remember distinctly Scarlet, which was like, how does this make me feel? Like, she <gasps> internalized the shit again. I'm like, oh, oh my god. god. Oh my god. Scarlet Witch. It's wrong Neither about anything. No, she never does. Don't forget, no more mutants. Right. That, that's where she gets the idea. She's like, fuck those mutants. Oh, wait, I am one too. But yeah. And but Janet's like, she still, still never my remarked thunder. on my, my costume. Outfit. I've changed it 17 times since then. Janet, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> shut up, Janet. Shut up, Janet. So, yes. So I knew this story. Yes, you did. I yeah. did. And I many didn't know heard. the story story. No. Like I didn't know all the other like elements to it. <laughs> like, like the dinosaurs. The, and right, stuff. I was gonna say like the dinosaurs. <laughs> That's all there is. Literally, Specifically like, the Avengers like, fight dinosaurs and Carol gives yeah. birth to her own rapist. Uh, fuck. And like I knew the Avengers were out of touch, but it's nice to see the depths to which they were out of touch with the situation that they were yeah. in. Yeah. And each other. Yeah. Just, just nobody's helpful. No. Or they think they're being, like, it's it's really weird. They're helpful in, like, the worst ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's like they can't read the room. 
Yeah. No. Well, and it's like, I don't know. And I feel bad because like, I wonder if Michelinie's like, well, I'm dealing with some heavy shit, but it is a comic book. <laughs> like at this time. Right. Like I can't It's just, like, who comics? Gerpa derp. But like also that. And it's like, I gotta. You, 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 it's gotta be lighthearted and silly and fun. Right. But also. I yeah, can, but why, like, then why did you put this crazy story where the, the, this guy like, like roofies <laughs> yeah. this Marvel? Yeah, no. Like that, so he can escape from limbo. Yeah, like, it's pretty selfish. Everything he does like, look, is horribly selfish. Look, Carol, you're the only one. You were the only one. You're the only one that can that get I me found. out of here. Like, yeah. you're the only one that I, I, I look for I a solid you. 25 minutes. <laughs> I need you. Well, that's like you. most of his so life. So you have to serve right. me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's all about, like, serving this freaking jackass. <sighs> Creepy. Creepy. Yes. Weird. Very creepy. Very weird. I don't know why anyone would think this was a good story. No. I can't believe there are... So there's at least four people in the room when they're concocting yeah. this thing and no one goes, um. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we should do that. Point of order? Uh, <laughs> can we just not? And you know what? By, by the way, you know why Shooter shot down the Cree thing? Hmm. Because it was kind of reminiscent of a plot point in a recently published What If comic Oh, get out of here. <laughs> it's not even like it was happening in, like, The Defenders or something. Right. It's like, no, it's happening in a who gives a shit, not continuity, What If comic. Now, maybe he was like, no, no, no. See, if someone likens it to the What If brand, they'll think that, like, What If is as indispensable as the Avengers. It'll, like, diminish the Avengers brand even more. Oh, my God. More. Like, I don't know what his thought process was. Maybe people people think it's derivative. Right. Like, oh, they already did that. Yeah, exactly. Well, he's definitely concerned about the derivative thing, but I'm thinking yeah. he's also, like, thinking, like, 3D chess. Like, no, right. no, also, it'll make people think that it's as least as lame as a What If comic book. <laughs> uh, and it's like, Shooter... No, it turns uh, out it's way lamer. Right. <laughs> it's actually... It, it, I promise you this, more people have read and remember this than that That is true. Book. So congratulations. <laughs> but at the same time, nobody knows what Jim Shooter was thinking because he claims he doesn't remember what happened. I feel bad because like, this may be the catalyst for the continued mistreatment of Carol Danvers and the rudderless directions to which she takes. Right. Yeah. Because like, like, what do we know about Carol? Fucked up stuff happens right, to like, her. She's, That's her character. Yeah. But Ms. Marvel don't fit on the X-Men because she's not a mutant. <laughs> so how long did she last on the X-Men? Longer than she... No. <laughs> I, I don't think it was longer than that because like she... Because eventually they were like, what is she doing here? <laughs> okay, Ms. Marvel, you've been here for like a few years now, but like, you gotta go. It, it's... Yeah. You... you these, these You're not rooms, really one of us. Right. At the end of the day... Like, we did you a favor bringing you in, but, like, I kind of thought maybe you'd get your own thing going at right. some point. But, you but know, you've been living here, here for a while, and, <laughs> you know, Magneto's fought us at least three or four times, and I don't remember you pitch-hitting at any point. So. <laughs> I do remember you eating all the Funyuns, though. <laughs> and I don't know if you noticed this, but we're like a school. Yeah. Like, most of the grown-ups here... Teach a class <laughs> or go out on missions. Yes. And you know, one or the other. Yeah. One or the other. Or we got a janitor down right. the hall. He does stuff too, he you know. Something. He doesn't go on the missions. And he also doesn't live here. <laughs> <laughs> he goes home at the end of the day. So I'm just wondering, Carol, like, what what would you say you do you here? Do here? <laughs> Avengers 200 was a thing. That was yeah. a thing. I don't it know if it's, a, if it's collected anywhere. I'll put it in the link in the description below this video. If you want to read it, I don't think you should. <laughs> like, you know what I it's mean? It's hard to recommend. It's hard. It's, all, it, it's not a recommend, you know? But it is part of history. Right. And <laughs> this happened. Yeah. And that's the thing is, is that, thing. like, I think it's important. Yeah. Like, not Never it's, forget. It's not an important <laughs> step, it's an important relic right. that yeah. we study and then <laughs> use to get better. <laughs> Not not something that we like must never forget and like yeah. use as a, as, a, as a launching pad for other things. Like it's, no. it's like an instruction manual of what not to do. <laughs> yeah, like if you have a, if you have a team of like eleven people, like don't just have them say anything interchangeably <laughs> and not provide any role. If if you're doing something controversial, maybe have a couple people on the side of the other controversy. You know, right? Or maybe just don't do that really controversial thing that you have no 
basis for doing in the first place. Right. Like, well, not only that, but like you're doing a, a milestone issue. Yeah. And they don't really fight anybody. No. They fight they those dinosaurs. They don't avenge anything. No. Well, no, they definitely no, they, don't do that. They deal with the fallout of an Avengers villain. You know, like they fight the legacy of Immortus. They, they don't fight anything. <laughs> no, they don't. They fight a giant dinosaur. The dinosaurs fight the aliens more than anything else. Yeah, mostly, yeah. So, Hulk yeah. does put them in a tornado, though. That's Thor. I mean, Thor. <laughs> Thor puts him in a tor- big, strong guy puts him in a tornado. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And sends him somewhere. So that, there's a little bit of conflict yeah. there, I guess. Kind of. Yeah. Hawkeye guy has a misunderstanding and blows up a machine. Yeah, I mean, is it much of a misunderstanding though? Well, it's sort He's of like, a lack of news. understanding. That's true. Yeah. As to he what's actually he happening. He doesn't the whole picture, but he does yeah. blow something up. And at That's the true. end, he's just like, oh, I hope they have a happily ever after. Yeah, I'm like, like <laughs> nobody learned anything. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs>